Why should I say this? That they were cursed to be slaves by being woodcutters and water carriers for the house of, I want you to see this, the house of my God is what Joshua said. Remember that? Look at verse 23. He says, Now therefore you are cursed, and none of you shall be freed from being slaves, woodcutters, and water carriers for the house of my God. Now why did Joshua say that? Why did Joshua say, my God? Now, I understand, and he said, you are cursed. I understand when Joshua said, you are cursed, he said that because the Gibeonites had to be slaves for the rest of their lives to Israel and do menial tasks to serve Israel. But in another sense, I don't really think that they were cursed, but I really think they were blessed. Now, here's why I think that the Gibeonites were blessed. Instead of being killed and utterly destroyed, they were now alive. They could, they could live. And they had the opportunity now to serve the true and living God. While before, they were serving what kind of gods? False gods. Pagan gods. Also, they had a choice, life or death, to be proud, fight and die, or to be humble, serve and live. But they chose to be humble, serve and live. They made the wise choice. No, the Gibeonites, I want you to understand this. The Gibeonites were not weaklings. The Bible tells us, you can just jot this down, in Joshua 10.2. In fact, we're right over there, so let's look at this. Joshua 10.2. It says that the Gibeonites, that they feared greatly because the Gibe that Gibeon was a great city like one of the royal cities. In other words, Gibeon was, a, it was not a very small city. It was a great city like one of the royal cities because it was greater than Ai, which was the one of the cities that Israel just destroyed, and all, not just some, and all its men were what? Mighty. In other words, the, the men of Gibeon, they were mighty men of valor. So they weren't weaklings, and they weren't pushovers. They weren't cowards. But something made them think, hey, you know what? It will be stupid for us to try to fight against this nation of Israel. We have no chance against them. Why? Not because of Israel, because of the God of Israel. Because, because his, they understood that it was what the God of Israel did to Egypt. What the God of Israel did to the two kings of the Amorites. Killed and wiped out the giants. They saw the God that was behind the nation of Israel. Their eyes got open to this. Talk about grace. Oh, hallelujah. So, anyway, Joshua says, My God, in the house of my God, although they were woodcutters, what a blessing to provide wood because they provided wood for what? The altar of the Lord is what it says. Did you, did, you did you see that? In verse 27. And that day Joshua made them woodcutters and water carriers for the congregation and for the what? The altar of the Lord. Wow. And most likely they were made as water carriers that they also provided water for the labor that was in the tabernacle of God. For the labor that carried the water, which the priests used to wash their hands and also to wash the animals. And so, here, they were bringing water for the house of God. Now, I want you to notice something. So, he says, my God. Why did Joshua tell them that they would be woodcutters and water carriers in the house of my God and not in the house of our God? Or at least to say, in the house of God. It's because Joshua didn't know 
the hearts of the Gibeonites yet. Joshua said, in the house of my God, because he thought there was still a distinction between him, the Israelites, and the Gibeonites. Because he saw the Gibeonites still as pagan worshipers that only made a covenant of peace with Israel just because they wanted to live. Yes, the Gibeonites wanted to live, and their desire to live was their main motive in the beginning, to seek a covenant of peace. But I believe another big reason why the Gibeonites were willing to make a covenant with Israel is because they were willing not only to serve Israel, but they were also willing to serve the God of Israel. Can you see that? Oh, man. In other words, in seeking to make a covenant of Israel, with Israel, the Gibeonites were already willing to forsake the gods that they were serving and worshiping. And they were willing to accept the God of Israel as their own personal God. Amen. Hallelujah. God. As a result, God saved the whole Hivite nation from being destroyed. Amen. The whole nation Amen. was saved. Amen. Woo. I mean, can you say, wow? wow. Say it backwards. Wow. Amen. <laughs> That's why, of all the tasks that the Gibeonites were ordered to do, it was to serve God in connection to the tabernacle of God. It was in connection to, to work in the house of God. Why? It's because God saw their hearts were already converted unto Him. That's why He chose them to do work in connection to the house of God. Their task, I mean, could have been to clean up the horse's dung in the stables. Or to wash dishes after the Israelite soldiers had their meals. I mean, not to put down the kitchen ministry. Please sign up for the kitchen ministry. In fact, you don't have to wash dishes. Only pots and pans because we use paper plates, right? <laughs> so easy, praise the Lord. But instead of those kind of duties, God placed it in the heart of Joshua to tell them to be woodcutters and to be water carriers in relationship to the house of their God. It wasn't just Joshua's God. It was their God. God saw that, wow, they had accepted. When they said, we're going to make a covenant with Israel, they already had it in their hearts that we're going to make a covenant with the God of Israel as well, that their God will be our God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. What better task could have been commanded to them to do? Nothing could be better than working to working close to the tabernacle, to the house of God, next to the Levites and with the priests of the living God. Oh, hallelujah. From the lower physical point of view, Joshua and Israel saw the Gibeonites as cursed slaves. But from the higher spiritual point of view, God saw the Gibeonites as blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. The Gibeonites were doomed under the penalty of death. There was no way that they could escape the death sentence upon them except through a covenant made with Joshua. Like the Gibeonites, we also were under the penalty of death. The wages of sin is what? Death. death. And we were doomed to destruction. But we were able to escape the death sentence upon our lives through a covenant made with our Joshua, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, the Gibeonites had perception. Excuse me. They had deception. 
got to clear my glasses. The Gibeonites, they had perception too. But they used deception. That's right. Yet God blessed them. Why? It's because although their approach was wrong, the deception was wrong, but their motive was right. And God looks at the heart. Just like when you look at Jacob, he deceived his brother. And he got the birthright. But God still blessed Jacob. Because Jacob really wanted that which was spiritual. Look at Rahab. She lied. When the, when the Israelite spies came in, the Jericho soldiers came in to try to find and search for these spies. She lied. They said, they said they're not here. But she had hid them up on the rooftop. And because she did that, they said, when we come in and we attack the city, if you put a red... Uh, scarlet cord hanging out of your window. If you bring yourself and your family members, whoever is in this house under this scarlet thread, the window that has the scarlet thread hanging out of it, which speaks of the blood of Jesus, will be saved and we won't destroy you. Amen. So Rahab and all of her household, her family, were saved. She lied. But yet God blessed her. They lied. They used deception. But you see, the approach was wrong, but the motive was right. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the only reason why the Gibeonites were able to have their eyes open and they were able to perceive that the God of Israel was the true and living God and that the gods that they were serving were false gods is because God opened their eyes. And the only reason why they were able to humble themselves to make a covenant to get saved is because they were chosen by God and they were graced by Him from the foundation of the world Amen. Amen. that they would be saved. Amen. Can you imagine? They were the remnant nation. They were the remnant group of all of the nations that were in the land. And they were the only ones that got saved. Wow. Likewise, we are Gentile Gibeonites that have been chosen and graced by God to be saved from the foundation of the world. He chose us even before we were born. That's why we could repent. The only reason why you could repent and you could get saved is because God chose yes, you yes. and He graced you and He softened your heart. The reason why their hearts could be humbled and softened so that they could come before Israel in, in a sense, humiliation and yet in humility before God is because God softened their hearts. Only if God softens our hearts can we come to Him. It's all by His grace, folks. Hallelujah. Hence, we are blessed, blessed, blessed. Because of all the peoples in the world, we are the remnant group of God that's graced, graced, graced. Hallelujah. Let's give Him a clap. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand in the presence of the Lord this morning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, I just want to let you know, this is just part one of the Gibeonite message. Next week, we're going to give you part two. You're going to see this thing even more clear. So you don't want to miss next week. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry. Now the sister wiped out. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Father, we praise you. <coughs> then God, you just consistently and continuously open up the scriptures to make us see, even through different situations, how much your grace is so wonderful. And just like, Lord, you graced the Gibeonites, you have graced us. And I praise you, Father, all we have to do, always remember, that no matter what we're going through, all we have to do is be still and to wait upon you to receive grace. And we will then see the salvation of the Lord. We will see Red Seas open up. 
opportunities that have been 